we are going to discuss the gearing diagram of a lap former. Let us look at the gearing diagram now. The gearing diagram is shown. These four are the calendar rollers. Here is a gearing diagram of a typical machine. There is one motor over here. There is a change pulley A, another change pulley G, another change pulley H, another change pulley F. This is called belt pulley J. This arrow shows the direction of delivery. So, here this arrow shows that this is the direction of delivery of the machine. These are the calendar rollers, here is a motor. We can see the way the motion flows is one single motor driving so many elements. So, the from here the motion flows to this side and going to the calendar rollers as well as to the lap forming unit. From this side the motion is flowing, from here it goes there, it goes in this direction and as you see from here the motion is distributed. So, by the time it goes to pulley F from here the motion is distributed, part of it goes in this direction right hand side, from here it is going to the front roller. This is this part, these three rollers that you see here, these three rollers are the drafting unit. this is the drafting unit. So, the motion goes to the front roller, from there this motion goes to the back roller, from here through belt pulley J it goes to the middle roller also. This is the creel part of the machine. All right. Now, let us see that how the motion is going, the especially the direction if the motor rotates in this direction as shown by the diagram of this particular arrow, then this shaft is rotating in the forward direction also, because this is connected to the motor itself. From here we go to this pulley and these are the two pulleys, by adjusting the diameter of the pulley A I can change the speed of the delivery rollers here and by this we can change the overall you know, production rate of the machine and uh, so from here I can change by this the, the drop that exists between the calendar rollers and the lap winding part, because this is called a tension drop and the tension drop can be changed by this way or from here the motion goes through this pulley to the set of calendar rollers. So, the directional rotation of this shaft and this is same, the way the pulleys and the, the belt which is driving these pulleys are also shown here. If we compare this with this, here you see that this pulley is rotating in this direction, but this pulley is rotating in the opposite direction, because the shaft, this is the shaft on which these two pulleys are actually you know connected, but this belt is going below this pulley, this pulley. If you look at the diagram, this belt is driving this pulley and as well as this pulley, but it is not going over the pulley, it is going under the pulley and as a result directional rotation changes. So, if it is rotating in clockwise, this will rotate in the anti clockwise direction. That is how the blue arrow indicates that there is a change in the direction of rotation. From there, so whatever directional rotation of this pulley, same is the direction rotation of E and on this pulley this shaft is going from one end to the other end and therefore, this shaft is turning in the same direction as of this blue arrow. So, blue arrow direction and the this direction, this direction are all basically same, they are all rotating in the same directions. From here we drive these two rollers, you see the belt goes under this pulley and therefore, there is a change in direction of rotation of this particular 
full set of rollers which are this will not change the direction as shown here, but the direction of this one is not going to change because the pulley is going on the top of this, this one, the belt is going on the top of this pulley as well as this pulley. Because of these two are connected by a belt and the belt is going over them. So, this shaft and this shaft will rotate in the same direction, whereas the intermediate shaft is going to rotate in the other direction. Okay. Now, let us go to the as I shown if we this way study the, the direction of the rotation of the rollers, you will see that wherever we need to change the direction, the belt goes under a particular pulley and as a result the direction rotation changes. This is how the motion is going from the motor to the entire part, all the parts of the machine. Now, in this machine to adjust the brake draft, belt pulley G is the change pulley which we use to adjust the brake draft. If we increase or decrease the diameter of this pulley, the speed of the middle roller is going to change and as a result the brake draft is going to change. When you want to adjust the total draft, there are two pulleys over here G and H. Look at the pulley G and H. These two pulleys can be changed in terms of their diameter and by this we will be able to change the speed of the back roller and the front roller and as a result the total draft is going to change. If we want to change the winding tension pulley F is there. So, this is the pulley F and by changing the diameter of this pulley the winding tension can be changed. So, you have to carefully look at the diagram and see how the motion is flowing to different parts or different elements of the machine and what are the various change pulleys, what is going to happen when the change pulleys are changed in terms of their diameter, what motions are going to be affected. This is a typical machine, otherwise the construction of the machine is simple, the drive diagram is also simple, there is not many, not too much complexity in it. We have textile machines where the drive is much more complex in nature. Now, we will discuss one or two numericals. Now, here is a numerical, a super lab former running with the following parameters. Find out the production in kg per shift if delivery speed is given, fiber linear density is given, lab linear density is given, doubling the number of cans which are there through which we are feeding the slivers, there are 28 cans that means 28 slivers are being fed and let us say efficiency is 85 percent. So, these are the data given, we have to find out how much is the production in kg per shift or per hour whatever it could be. If we know per, per hour, we can also find out per shift because we know that every shift means basically 8 hours. So, we can multiply by 8 or sometimes a shift is considered to be 7 and half hours because 30 minute recess is given. So, we can also multiply it by 7.5 hours. So, if this is given, how to calculate the production? The calculation is very simple. 150 is the delivery speed. So, delivery speed if we know multiplied by 60, that is per hour we get it. Then if we multiply it by the kilotex value of the sliver is 65. So, we multiply it by 65, we get it in gram, we divide by 1000 to make it in kg and then we multiply it by the efficiency factor we get production in kg per hour and that gives you a value 497.25 kg per hour. That means, this machine produces almost 500 kg per hour. If we want to go for a shift, we have to multiply this. 
So, 497.25 cross if I go by 8 hours a shift, we will multiply by 8 and whatever value we get that becomes the production in kg per shift at 85 percent efficiency. So, this is a very straightforward simple calculation basically substitution of data there is not much complexity in it. The other thing also we can calculate calculate though it has not been given in the example or in the numericals that how much draft is here. So, what is the definition of draft that you have to remember? Definition of draft is the linear density of feed material divided by linear density of delivered material. So, what is being fed? Saliva. How many of them are being fed? 28. So, each saliva linear density is 4.5. So, I am feeding 28 saliva. So, combined linear density of all the saliva is 4.5 into 28, it is 126 kilotex. Lab linear density is 65 kilotex, that has been given already. So, I take the ratio of these two, we get a draft and draft is 1.94. That means, this machine the draft is 1.94. This is a very easy calculation. Another numerical also simple find the expected draft of a lab former if the data is given lab linear density is given, doubling is given which is 32, saliva hank or saliva linear density is given in any terms. So, the only thing is that saliva linear density has been given in any unit. So, one must know how to convert any to tax. If that conversion factor if we remember it becomes very easy to calculate and that one has to remember. So, this value is that if I divide 590.5 by the hang value which is in any we get the tax value of the saliva or yarn. So, the factor is 590.5 this is very important one must remember this value. So, 590.5 divided by 0 0.12 that gives you 4920 tex in kilotex we get it 4.92 kilotex. So, this is the linear density of the saliva rest is now very simple total saliva linear density or combined saliva linear density is going to be 4.92 to 32 because 32 is the number of doubling therefore, this value is coming 157.44 kilotex the lab linear density is given this much draft is the ratio of these two we get 2.09. That is how we calculate the draft or we can calculate the production. Okay. With this we end this lecture. Thank you.